guys, I'm Amrita. I'm going to give you guys a demo of Snaptruth. I'm just going to go ahead and start a fresh project here by clicking on that button. Uh, the first thing it asked me to do is type in a name for the project. So I'm just going to do that. Submit. As soon as you press submit, uh, you see that the tab starts loading. Basically, it starts loading your canvas and the interface will be up in a couple of seconds. Now you can see that the interface is fairly straightforward. You have a bunch of tools here on top and you have a bunch of libraries here on the right hand side. It's, uh, fairly straightforward to use. Uh, you can start a project in three ways in Snapdroot. Uh, one is you could sketch directly on canvas using the sketch tool. So you could sketch out whatever you'd want to. And this is something I would recommend if you were using an iPad. It's fairly straightforward to design using the sketch tool. If you want to draw clean lines, I would suggest that you use a draw tool. So you can actually draw neat lines. As soon as you complete the lines, you will see that a complete room is generated. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. You can also start a project by uploading a sketch. So I'm going to click on the upload sketch button, find a sketch from my computer and press submit. As soon as the sketch is uploaded, you'll see a blue line over here with a couple of grips on both the sides. This is basically for you to set the scale of the image. So you click and drag. This is a dimension that I know, so I've dragged it here. You can drag it to any angled or vertical dimension as well. It is five meters, so the units are in mm. And press enter, and the sketch gets scaled accordingly. Now I'll go into the Create Drawing tab and I'll click on this button which says Label. Click within all the spaces. Now you'll see that the sketch, which is a single line sketch, got converted into a line drawing. This is basically how Snapdroot works. And all the spaces which were there in the sketch have gotten converted into drawings. Not only that, the drawing is also quite optimized. So if you hover on any edge, you'll see that all the dimensions are rounded off to the nearest 100 mm. I'm just going to click on the Select tool. And I'm going to click on each room and start labeling them. So this is a living, the bedroom, a dining space here, and a kitchen. I'm going to go to 3D and show you what this looks like in 3D. So you see that all the masses are extruded to a three meter high. Now I wanted this to be a balcony. So I'm just going to double click and label it as balcony. And you'll see that immediately the extrusion changes in 2D as well, in 3D as well. So the height of the balcony is set by default to a meter and all the other heights are set to three meters, which you can change over here by looking at stories. Now to go back to the 2D view, I again click on story one and I can view the plan of story one. Now I can go ahead and edit as I want to. I'll use the move tool and I can move either an edge or through a vertex by double clicking. So I click this edge twice. I can actually move the edge itself without moving the object and I can snap it anywhere I want to. I can use the edit polygon tool to basically see what the dimensions are. And if I need to correct something, I can do that as well. Now I've forgotten to draw some bathrooms here. So I'm going to use the draw mouse tool and I'm going to draw. You can see that it snaps to everything. Once you're satisfied with the layout, we have this tool basically called the auto interiors tool. So what happens when I click on that is that furniture gets sort of automatically placed within all the rooms so it sort of gives me an understanding of the scale of each of the rooms so i know if they're too big or too small and clearly i can see that the dining room is way too big over here i don't need it to be that big cool now i'm ready to make copies of this apartment And there we have the entire block. Just going to draw in the core here. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw the side. I know that my side is approximately 50 meters by 35. Now I'm going to go to 3D and you'll see that again the extrusion is of 3 meter high. It's very simple. I just double click it and label it as side and the extrusion auto changes. So now you'll see that a lot of spaces actually have uh, default properties to them. So balcony is one of them, site is another one. You also notice that if you 
label something as a water body, it will go below the ground. If you label something as a road, it's created with a 50 mm extrusion. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and convert this into a double line drawing or a more detailed model. So that's very simple. You can see that this is a massing model, right? So I'm just going to click on the create building button. And there you go. You have a detailed model. I'm just going to hide the roof. And you'll see that all the walls have been created with a 200 mm thickness. If I show the roof again, you'll see that the roof has been created with a 150 mm thickness. Whatever I'd labeled as site, a boundary wall has automatically got created for it as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and place some doors and windows. Just click on a door to place it. Fairly straightforward. I can also start placing windows. So it's as simple as selecting a window and placing it where you'd like to. Now, as you can see that both the door and the window, they are BIM, so they create a cutout in the wall. And if I move the door as well, the cutout moves. So a couple of other features. So if you click on the areas tab, you'll see that the carpet area and built up area has been calculated for the project. So I can see which rooms have got what carpet area and what the overall built up area is. Now by fitting, filling in my site area here, I will be able to also calculate my FAR. This is in square meters. I'm going to create multiple stories out of this plan now. So I'm just going to select all the objects in story one and I'm going to create five copies. So I'm just going to type five here and press this button. And there you go. And you can go back to areas and you can see it's been updated for each story. And the FAR is updated as well. You'll see that the roofs by default have an overhang of 600 mm. Now you can go to project properties and you can change that and they've all gone back in. There we go. Now we have a whole bunch of other features as well. Like you can use dramas in 3D to draw some fenestration elements or like facade elements. Apart from this, we also give you a couple of other numerics like bill of materials. So just going to click on the material schedule and it'll tell you basically how much material goes into the construction of this project. So what is the floor composed of, the walls, the slabs. So I'm just going to go to the materials tab and start applying some paint. Aside from that, I can also apply say stone flooring. And when I click on my material schedule again, you'll see that it has updated accordingly. So there are some default finishes, right? Based on which you saw the material schedule earlier. Now all of these extra finishes that you've applied have gotten added to this as well. It's pretty cool. You can export this and take it out for costing. So just click on the export button. Similarly, you can also export out your areas. You can also go ahead and place furniture manually. And there we go. You place it. Now you'll see that by default over here, it always snaps to the floor. So any furniture you place, whether you place it in 2D or 3D, will always be on the floor. So it's that simple and that straightforward, really. Yeah, that's about it from Snapdrude.